now what was the other part and I, I don't think we need to go too much into this because I mean there have been some really good books on the New Mexico campaign uh, with regard to like the, the the struggle of the Confederacy moving into it but I think the part that I want to ask for you because you do bring Mexico into it and uh, the kind of Napoleon Maximiliano's experiments there of bringing monarchy and conservatism to the to this failed Republican experiment from their perspective. And it, it seems like considering the, the ties, the kind of interactions that you're showing that when we study the, the South, the Confederacy, the West, the, the kind of Southern Confederate West um, and Mexico, we, we really have to study all three of them together because they, they otherwise don't just, they just seem to not make sense. Um, with the experiments that are being contemplated here. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, the, the, the border between the United States and Mexico during this era was, a, was as Rachel St. John says, a line in the sand. It, it didn't mean a whole lot. Um, and of course, Americans in the end of Bill Mayer were thinking of all sorts of ways to seize more Mexican territory. Um, Southerners got a little bit extra Mexican land with the Gadsden Purchase in 1853. Um, and there's no saying how much more, more land they would have taken had they formed their independent country. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's right, Niels. You have to put you have to put the the South, the West, and Mexico in conversation because they bled into one another in all sorts of ways. I mean, the the line separating them was was sometimes imperceptible. It it sort of kind of following up on that. Um, how much how I guess how aware are Southerners saying? In, in the Gaston Purchase area and what they would call Arizona um, of kind of that, that situation that the Apache raiding going back across the back and forth across the border, kind of the notion of maybe going towards the um, Bay of California for like a, a trade outlet, uh, Mexican kind of political instability considering, I mean, when you look to the east side there was, um, Santiago Vidori, I mean, there's, there's not really Mexican governmental authority in northern Mexico, in parts of northern Mexico. I mean, how much are they aware of that instability and want to use that to their benefit? I think they're keenly aware. I mean, there's a reason William Gwynn selects Sonora as the location for his sort of renegade colony. He convinces Napoleon III to let him have a little expatriate colony there. I mean, it was Gwynn's objective all along to eventually see the Confederacy win and then link that colony with an independent California and an independent Pacific Republic. And who knows, he might've been the, Senate, the first Senator there too. Um, and, and he did that because he saw Mexico as a, as a vulnerable target, as so many white Americans saw Mexico through this period. 